there's one. There's no funner way to catch fish than to dock shoot crappie. That's about as fun as it gets right there. Good morning from the lake. The sun hasn't even come up yet. We're out here on the kayak, and today we are going to be dock shooting for crappie. And I'll tell you what, if you've never shot docks for crappie, you're missing out. And I'll talk about why here in a few minutes, but for right now, let's go find some docks and let's go get started. We just got to our first set of docks, and these are obviously much higher off the water. They don't offer quite as much shade as a lot of docks that I like to shoot, but at the same time, they do have a lot of these big posts. I think the crappie like to gravitate to sit kind of right next to this stuff. The other thing is this is right off the main river channel, and so it brings just a little bit deeper water, and I think the crappie like that. And one more thing I'm noticing is I am seeing a lot of little bait fish around this area, so I think there's probably an abundance of food. So I have a feeling there should be some crappie around. There's one. That was a nice little bite right there. And there you have it, he's around the post. All right, well, we're on the board. Had a couple short strikes, finally got one to eat. And not a giant fish by any means, but a nice little healthy crappie, nice and fat too. Definitely has been eating. Like I said, there's tons of bait in this area, so there's no shortage of food. And you see he ate that pretty good. This is a pink 132nd ounce mule jig with a true chartreuse mule minnow 2.2. Pink and chartreuse is always a good color for crappie. There you have it, beautiful little fish. See you, buddy. Hopefully we can catch a couple more right here. There was a good shot way back in there. So I shoot it in there and then I just basically keep my rod tip kind of high at an angle. And then I just let that thing pendulum down beneath the dock. And if my line jumps, that's when you set the hook. You know, these crappie like that, that one was a short striker, but my line totally just jumped. These crappie can have some finicky little bites. So you really have to pay attention you can have the most sensitive rod in the world and you might not even notice a lot of the bites unless you're paying attention to your line because some of the bites you're just never going to feel in the rod. There's one. See, I would have never felt that bite in the rod. I just noticed my line was acting funny and that one ate the uh, cowpoke color. So, I think we've still got some experimenting to do with color, but we've caught one on each. Now this is another really healthy crappie, not very long, but really beefy. Just, they're feeding well, man. Lots of food in here. There you go. Nice chunky one. See ya, buddy. Oh yeah, way back in there. Anybody back there? I will say the two fish I caught were pretty darn close to that post in the water. A lot of times I think they like to just kind of nose up to a post, just makes them feel a little more comfortable. It's kind of a little bit of an ambush spot. And just, just, I don't know if you've ever looked at crappie in like an aquarium, like if you go to like a Cabela's or Bass Pro, they're always just kind of sitting with their nose up against something. And I feel like they do that exact same thing with these posts. And because there's so many dang posts in the water, I think that really helps me. Cause they just, they feel more comfortable with brush or with, you know, a lay down or just something in the water. And I don't know, there, there's probably some brush piles in this lake. I don't know where they're at, but these posts work just the same. I guess some of you are probably wondering what I do when I actually shoot the, the jig under there. Well, I grab the hook, not by the point, obviously. I just kind of grab it behind the hook a little bit. And then I've got it, usually I've got it anywhere from about, you know, 70 to 80% way down the rod. In this case, I probably would like to have it about here. But anyways, I create that big bow and arrow and then I let go of the jig and I let go of the line. You know, it's kind of important. You let go of the jig first and then you kind of wait just a real split second and then you let go of the line and then you keep it low to the water and that way it can get under the docks. Now these docks are super easy. These would be great docks to kind of practice on. There was one. Did you guys see that line jump? Oh, he's behind it. Oh no. Oh man, this might be a big crappie. Holy smokes. Yeah, that's a nice one. Look how fat that fish is. I mean, look at that thing. It's like about to pop like a balloon. Holy smokes. That's exactly what the bites are like a lot of times. Your line just jumps. And I love that because these fish are obviously halfway down. These fish suspend. I mean, they're notorious for suspending. Whether they're under docks or not, they're just a total suspending fish. And so a lot of times those bites are just gonna be pop. That line's just gonna jump a little bit. That's the species we're after right there, a little slab. 
I know it's been a while since my last episode of Slab Stories, but we are back, folks. We are back. See you, buddy. I'm definitely different than most dog shooters. I like to use a little bit lighter weights. I use anywhere from 1 64th all the way up to 3 32nd. Um, but when the, when the water's really calm and the fish are a little bit more finicky or if they're sitting higher in the water column, I really love to shoot with like a 1 64th ounce or a 1 32nd. And it just sinks so dang slow and it gives the fish all the time in the world to eat it. And I really like that. You know, most people that shoot docks and most of the videos you're gonna see on YouTube are a lot of times they're people down south and they might be fishing a little bit deeper docks than I fish. And they're probably gonna be using, you know, 1 16th at the lightest. A lot of times they use 1 8th, 1, one quarter ounce. You know, these are heavier jigs. And in this situation, I just think you would sink below the fish too quick. Well, I think a pike just ate my jig. Ah, the beauty of being a northern angler. I noticed my line started swimming off. I went to set the hook and it just disappeared completely. I mean, it was just like butter. This is the Mule Minnow 3.2, definitely on the larger size for crappie, but I feel like these are some pretty big ones. I think there's also some size potential here, so I'm not afraid to use that little bit larger profile. The other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim that little head portion off. You know, these are designed with an intention to be trimmable. You know, this little portion right here is pretty small, but when it comes to crappie fishing, um, that little segment right there might make a difference. So I am gonna go ahead and trim that off. And there you go. And see, it ain't much, but it makes a little difference. And then we're just gonna go ahead and slide that jig into the plastic nice and straight, as straight as physically possible. And come out, there we go. And then we're just gonna pull that up over, snap it into place. There you have it. Tasty little crappie morsel right there. I'm not a huge believer in scent, but every now and again, I do like to add it. And this water's pretty dirty, so I figure it can't hurt. I don't necessarily know if it actually makes a big difference, but it definitely is not gonna make a you know negative difference, I wouldn't think. So I just put a little bit of that on there sometimes and uh, just gives it a little bit of flavor. You wanna know one of my favorite things about pontoons? They're basically a floating dock that you can shoot. There you go, way up under there. Maybe there's a crappie underneath this pontoon. I like to think there might be. Yep, there is. There you go. And that, my friends, is why you shoot pontoons, too. Good times. Good times. Thank you, Mr. Pontoon. It ain't much, but again, it's a very healthy fish. These fish are not exactly long, but they're very girthy. Now, I know a lot of anglers' natural tendency when it comes to fishing is they like to work their baits. They like to reel it in. They like to twitch it. But realistically, the bulk of the time when I'm fishing these crappie, I'm just letting it sink. It's all about the rod angle and just penduluming the jig. You know, it's more about a profile just kind of naturally flowing down into their strike zone. If you overwork your bait, I feel like you don't catch as many fish. You know, there's times where the crappie are aggressively chasing and you actually need to work your bait back. But a lot of times I would say that's more so like the early spring. Um, this time of year, I feel like they're, you know, they're a little bit slower and just a nice slow retrieve is the way to do it. Oh baby. Let's see if there's another under the pontoon. I can't see my line, which is definitely a disadvantage because that sun is totally blinding me. So it's all off of feel right now. Oh, there's one. Yep, fortunately that fish I could feel. Feels like a nice one. Yeah, it's a good crappie. Might be my best one yet. I think that's definitely my best one yet. It's a real nice fish. Holy smokes. Just for size reference, we'll go ahead and throw a measurement on this fish. I, I imagine he's around 10 inches. He's not all that big. Again, these fish aren't exactly long. They're very healthy though. I like to see them so thick and uh, you know, clearly they're eating. Yeah, this, is, this fish is right at 10 inches. So not exactly a giant by any means, but very, very healthy and always a good time. And I tell you what, there's no funner way to catch fish than to dock shoot crappie. That's about as fun as it gets right there. There he is. Man, that fish walloped it. Another sizable one. These are perfect eaters right here. These fish like nine to 11 inches, nice and fat. They're perfect eaters. I'm not keeping any fish today, but if I was, man, this one would make a nice taco. Beauty. See ya, bud. I like using the cowpoke color, a little bit more dirty water like this. I'll fish it in just about anywhere, but 
in this more stained water paired up with either a chartreuse or a fire red jig and I just feel like I've had such good success with it. Seems like the crappie really like it. There he is. Now some of these fish just kind of nip at a time or two before taking it down. It's my smallest fish of the day. But you know what? Shout out to this fish because he was still fun. I don't care if he's small. Still a blast. Something about this pontoon. It's just magical. It's the magical pontoon. That's definitely my best crappie of the day. That's a beauty. Beautiful slab right there. Haven't caught any true giants yet. We've caught a lot of consistent quality though. I'll take that any day of the week. 40 minutes into our fishing trip and we've already caught a lot of fish. No complaints on my end, but I'm sure by now a lot of you are wondering what my setup is. Well, I've got a size 1000 Daiwa reel with six pound braid and then a Temple Fork seven foot ultralight. It's a fast action. I can't say that this is necessarily my dock shooting setup. It's one of them. I've used lots of ultralights and I've had fun with all of them. So I don't necessarily think that I have a strong preference when it comes to dock shooting. I'd say these longer rods are a little bit better for like the pendulum, but they're a little more clunky around the post and whatnot. Whereas like a little bit shorter rod's gonna be a little more portable, a little easier around the posts. Um, and I've had just as much success skipping with those as I do with this. So at this point, I would say that it doesn't matter too much, especially when you're on a kayak um, because you have you're, you're so low to the water so you can kind of make different rods work. If you're in a boat, you obviously need to consider it a little bit more because you're standing up and you're off the water a little bit. So you need to find a rod that's gonna work well with your setup. But all in all, I would say whether you're using mono, fluoro, braid, or a long rod or a short rod, doesn't matter too much. You should be able to make them work. Now I'm using ultralight. A lot of people when they crappie fish, they use light setups, maybe even medium light setups. Um, for me, the ultralight's great for that lower diameter line and those really lightweight jigs, but you can absolutely use other setups as well. Anyways, I know that didn't necessarily narrow it down too much, but I guess at the bare minimum, hopefully you understand now that you don't need like a super specific setup just for dock shooting. You can make do with a lot of different spinning outfits. All right, let's get back to fishing because we're absolutely whacking them and I'm looking forward to catching more. Because we just talked about setups, I'm gonna go ahead and show that I can do the same exact thing with this other setup. It's definitely very different. It's a six foot one, it's a fast, but it's definitely a lot more like an extra fast, I would say, because it's got that solid tip. It's the Daiwa Kage, um, and then I've got two pound monofilament on there. So a totally different setup, but we can do the exact same thing, and I'm gonna show you that right now. Now this is a 132nd ounce mule jig, so this is a little bit lighter, um, but again, there you go. I actually shot it inside of the pontoon. That was crazy. Oops. Sorry, Mr. Pontoon. I didn't know you had a hole on your side. All right, I'm gonna catch one right there. This pontoon has gotta have at least one more fish underneath it. Oh man, that fish I did not feel at all. I will say the braid is definitely, that is definitely, that very well could be my biggest crappie yet. Oof, that's a beefy one, holy smokes. That's hands down my biggest crappie yet. It's a good thing I dropped that chartreuse minnow down under that pontoon because uh, we caught a bunch of fish on the cow poke, but trying that little bit different color gave me my biggest beefcake yet. That is a really beautiful fish, man. See ya, bud. I think the mono gives me an opportunity to actually shoot it further under these docks, but the braid has a little more sensitivity. So again, there's kind of pros and cons. Um, the braid does just fine with a little bit heavier jigs. I don't like it as much with the light stuff though just doesn't seem to get that same level of velocity you can get with the uh, mono. Um, the other thing that it comes down to is your rod tip. And this rod tip right here is obviously extremely stout, very, very fast rod. So that definitely affects the shoot as well. Because if you look at this, this rod right here does not hardly bend down the blank at all. And pairing it up with that two pound test and that lighter jig, it does really well to shoot it far. Most people think about dock shooting for crappie, but I'll tell you what, dock shooting's fun for big bluegill too. And that's something that I'll definitely do a video on in the future as well. Um, that's where I definitely would prefer to use something like a 164th ounce with like a horse fly and just shoot it under there and keep it high in the water column and those bluegill come up and just smash it. As much as I'm 100% confident, we could probably catch some more fish under this pontoon right here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and call it and we're just gonna keep moving a little bit just to try some new waters. Oh boy, this is not a crappie. This is not a crappie. Oh, I 
broke. Ah, shoot. Daggummit, I don't know what that was, but it was big. It didn't feel like it broke because of teeth, but it very well could have been a, like a big pike or something. And then eventually it just caught the tooth, I don't know. Daggummit, could have been just about anything. It's always a bummer, that's like one of the worst feelings, is losing a fish that you know is huge and you never even had a chance to see, so you have no idea what it was. I'm gonna be thinking about that fish for the rest of the weekend, that's for sure. Ooh, feels pretty big. <sighs> yes, sir. Nice slab right there. There you go. This one's got as much shade as we've found yet. We're still sitting over 10 foot of water. Man, I'm just gonna be thinking about that last fish forever. I don't know what it was, but something broke me off and it was huge. I mean, it was a heavy fish. And I'm really bummed by the fact that it, it is swimming off with my jig right now. Oh man, nice bite. This might be a big slab. Oh man, he's way back in there. I don't know if this is a slab or a bass. This might be a bass. Oh, oh shoot, daggummit. I should have went in there after him, but I can't exactly go under that dock, but if I could have just nosed in there, I might have had a little bit better leverage. I think that was a bass but if it was a crappie, it was absolutely huge. Daggummit, folks. I just broke off a giant fish, and then I just lost something. I, I don't know if that was a largemouth bass or if that was a giant crappie, but daggummit. Daggummit is all I have to say. That's a crappie. Nice one. Whew. Real solid one. Whew. Still, I'm still thinking about that last fish I just missed. It's a nice tank of a crappie though. See you, buddy. We've still got several hours left to fish, but I tell you what, I've already accomplished everything I was planning to, and uh, it only took me like an hour. So we absolutely pulverized the crappie, and I'm having a lot of fun with this, but I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is actually close out today's video, and then do a second video. And in the next video, I'm probably gonna do some more dock shooting for crappie, but I'm also just gonna fish for whatever bite. So I don't really know what I'm gonna get into, no real agenda, but it seems like there's some big fish around, so I think I wanna go try to catch them. I've got two casting rods in the back, and then I've got the three ultralights, so between those five rods, I have a feeling I'm gonna catch a lot more fish. Now, I just wanna say thank you so very much for watching today's video. Thank you for watching all of my videos for those of you who have been around for a while. If you're new to this channel, I would love if you consider subscribing. Um, anyways, I hope you have a great day. We'll catch you next time.